Welcome to the Vox Garage. Today we're going to review how to install our new in-vehicle seatback entertainment system. It's a very universal and simple installation. It takes only roughly a half hour. Okay, to get started, as you see here, we have all the kit components for the universal seatback system. It's a dual monitor system, 10.1 inch screens, your bracket assembly, mounting hardware, two dual channel wireless headphones, the harness and cable that goes through the seat to power up the unit, and the T-harness that'll join the the monitor cables at the bottom. What you also want to make sure that you have to test the equipment is at least an iOS or an Android based smartphone device. It could be a smartphone or a tablet. Uh, USB with some media on it. Could be some photos or videos and, and a DVD to test the DVD player. The two monitors are very similar in their form factor. They're, they're both 10.1 inch 5 point capacitive touch panels. Okay, this monitor has a built-in slot load DVD player on the side. The eject button is hidden and recessed on the top of the unit. On the other side we have our hard inputs which is a USB for reading and charging capabilities, a wired headphone output, a micro SD card so you could read back media files, movies, videos, and a reset button. The second monitor features similar inputs as the first monitor. Again, you have your USB input with charging capabilities that also reads files like videos and music. You have your micro SD input, a wired headphone output, but on this monitor, unlike the other monitor that has the single DVD, this has a single HDMI input. All right, the bracket assembly, just to give you a little point of reference before we get to installing it, it's a metal bracket, multiple components. You have a front bracket, a back bracket, a top uh, bracket to fix it, and then a nice cover plate. Bracket installation is really simple. It's six screws. Basically, on the back side of each monitor, you're going to release the little cover. You're going to take the bracket assembly, slide it up under. There's six uh, Phillips screws that you would affix the unit to it. Once that is screwed down, you put the protective cover back on it, and then you're ready to install it in the vehicle. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to remove the factory headrest from the seat top. Once you do that, you're going to notice the exposed seat top post guides. This is where the actual bracket's going to mount to. It's not mounting to the guides themselves, it's mounting underneath. So once the whole system is installed and the factory headrest is put back in the car, it doesn't interfere with the movement of the factory headrest, whether that be a manual adjustable headrest or a motorized headrest. In doing so, the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to route your cable through the seat. Every seat's going to be different. We highly suggest using some plastic type of tool in order to work your cable around underneath the seat post guide to run it through the seat, exit out the bottom. You're going to do that on both seats. Once you do that, you're ready to move to the next step, which is installing the actual bracket. All right, so as you can see here, I got the bracket now mounted up to the monitor. I put a wire tie in there, so once I plug in this cable you know I could keep it nice and safe by locking this in here once that's done you're gonna mount this to the seat pack so in this case I'm gonna take this wire I'm gonna bury it underneath there's a little lift in the actual bracket to accommodate some spacing you might have to tuck your cable in back to the seat a little bit but this is going to go underneath the seat post guides if you need you might want to use a tool in this case slides in relatively simple and then the first part of the mounting bracket is already attached and as you can see without even putting the rest of the mounting bracket together the system's already pretty sturdy so now that we have the monitor and the front bracket assembly mounted to the seat post guides or underneath the seat post guides we're going to now take the back bracket here we're going to slide it up above on top of the front bracket and now we're just going to take this push down a little bit slightly to get it underneath the seat post guides and now what you have is a nice stable steel mounted structure underneath the seat post guides again not interfering with the headrest movement but giving you that stability when that's on there you're going to take the supplied washers and this particular nut here and you're going to tighten this all five bolts down that's going to keep that secured once that's completed you're then going to take the supplied plastic bracket here. We add this bracket because it gives additional stability, sandwiching 
the metal bracket that's underneath the seat post guides and then on top of the guides. So what that's going to do is give you a little bit of extra stability and support if necessary to keep the whole modern assembly firmly affixed to the seat post. All right, again, not interfering with the factory headrest movement. This is the finished cover that's going to clean up the entire assembly, cover all the bracket elements. You're going to take the two supplied screws that come with the hardware pack to keep this firmly seated. And as you notice around here, well, you may not see it exactly, but there's some slots that are cut out. Depending on the factory headrest post and the manual adjustment, sometimes there's little locking mechanisms, allows you to get in there to adjust the headrest if necessary. All right, so once you're done mounting the, the monitors and the brackets to the, to the seats, and you've routed your cables and you've connected your power source and your ground source and that installation side of it's done. Now you're ready to test the monitors and make sure they operate before you deliver the vehicle back to the customer. So as you can see right now, both the home button and the power buttons are lit up red. When you first apply power to the system, even the end user, when they turn the key on, these buttons are going to flash between red and blue. That's normal. That's the Android operating systems that are in the monitors actually booting up in the background. So that could take anywhere from 5 to 10 seconds for that to happen. Once that's done, you just hit the power in order to turn the units on. A lot of new vehicles come factory standard with Wi-Fi already embedded in the vehicle or if you don't have Wi-Fi in the vehicle you can connect to the hotspot on your personal device. So whether it's an Android device or an Apple device, turn on your hotspot, you connect the monitors through the hotspot and then you can access full capabilities of this system. When you go into the Wi-Fi menu it's a one-time setup so once you get in the vehicle you want to make sure that Wi-Fi is on, you want to select Wi-Fi and then find out what you're connecting to. So again, if it's in vehicle hotspot, you want to see that in the list, you want to connect to it. Once you connect to it, you don't have to connect to it each time you get in a vehicle. It's a one-time connection. In this case, I don't have a Wi-Fi in this vehicle. I'm connecting to a personal hotspot. So I connect to the hotspot, shows me I'm connected. I go back. Okay, so, so once I'm connected to Wi-Fi, that's done. In the setup menu, Voxlink is a unique feature that's available only for Vox Electronics products, in particular the CPAC system. What this allows you to do is it allows you to have a virtual remote control. So we want to test that functionality. So the first thing you want to do is you want to download the Voxlink app. That's available on the Google Play Store. It's also available on the Apple App Store. So it's a free app. You can download it to your test device, have it there. Once you've downloaded it, you want to go into the system menu and you just want to make sure that the monitors and the unit are all connected to the same network. So if you're in a shop and you have Wi-Fi and you want to test through the shop's Wi-Fi, connect the monitors to the shop's Wi-Fi, connect your, your testing device to the, to the shop's Wi-Fi. If they're all connected, then you're going to see that up on the screen. Okay. Once you know that you're all connected to the same network, if I want to be able to control the system via the Voxlink app, I'll open up the app. I'm going to pick the monitor I want to control. So in this case, SB10MD1 is the DVD monitor. SB10M1 is the non-DVD monitor. Those will be their identifiers to be able to tell the remote user, generally that's going to be a parent in the front seat who can't see the monitors, which monitor they're controlling. So in this case, I want to control this monitor. I'm going to connect. And now, without having to see the screen, if I'm a small child and I'm in the back of the vehicle and I can't touch the screen, mom and dad in the front seat can control the device. We want to test it and make sure it's functioning. In this case, I'm going to access the DVD. Okay, what's happening here is just it's controlling the system, sending commands over Wi-Fi to the system, and then it's feeding back video images so that remote user that can't see the screen can see exactly what's going on in the, in the back seat. So if I want to go back and control another source like USB, I just select that, go to video, pick a video, let it play. So right now we know that Voxlink is operational. So when you deliver the car, the consumer is going to be ready to go. So after testing some of the basic feature functions, uh, then the system's ready to go. Wi-Fi is working. We know that's good to go. Your DVD is functioning. Uh, if you want to test an SD or a USB, certainly do so. Some of the other features we're going to get into in a little bit on the complete user operation. The beauty of the system is a dual 10.1 inch touchscreen interface, five point capacitive touch. 
fully feature laden with every possible feature from old school technology, from DVDs to USB SD input capabilities so you could bring up your favorite or store your favorite movies and videos on portable media and plug it in and play back on the device. Uh, some of the enhanced features are smart stream capability. Smart stream is our way of being able to allow a user to wirelessly send content from their personal device to the system monitors. Now with that said, because it's, it's limited based on its capacity of the smart device being used and maybe the, the app access or the app being selected to be able to wirelessly transmit, there may be some digital rights management or some copyright restrictions that may prohibit wireless streaming of content from your own personal device to the system monitors. Another way to, to overcome that is on one of the monitors we included an HDMI input. So HDMI allows you to then, with the appropriate HDMI adapter for your smart device, whether it's an Apple or Android device, plug in that adapter and with a hardwired HDMI cable, plug into the system monitor. Uh, then you'll have full mirroring capabilities. All that the digital rights management and copyright protection is encrypted in that cable. So it allows everything you see on your smart device to mirror onto the other screen. And then if you want to share that content on both screens, Included with this monitor system functionality is the ability to what we call dual screen. So whatever you're seeing here, you can watch there. Or whatever you're, you're watching here, you could see here. You could share that content just by setting one of the monitors up as the transmitting monitor and one of the monitors up as a receiving monitor. So again, fully functional system that offers every content capability and unlimited access to content in the in-vehicle environment. But the real, the coolest feature function of this and the one feature that has never been invoked in a rear seat entertainment device is full functional front seat control. So if you have small children in the back seat that aren't of an age to actually physically operate the systems and control the system monitors directly, we've developed an app for Apple and Android. So the app is called Voxlink. It's available as a free app on the Google Play Store and on the Apple App Store. Once downloaded to your smart device, you would select it. It'll come up. Once it opens up, it's going to show the two monitors that are connected through your smart device on Voxlink. So what Voxlink allows you to do now is if you're in the front seat, anything that I want to control on this system monitor, I see it and can control it through a remote interface. If I want to be able to control the other monitor, I simply go back into the Voxlink app. I select the other monitor, and now I have full control of the other monitor. This is an innovative first in the in-vehicle rear seat entertainment space. We hope you enjoy the system.